Good evening, Corvallis, and welcome to the Beaver News. We're glad to have you with us on this fine Thursday night. I'm Spencer Smallwood. And I'm Kim Stowell. In what is, in what is possibly the biggest news to hit the OSU campus this term, the Daily Barometer's Kristen Pugmire and David Shumway have reported that the Associated Students of Oregon State University have voted to impeach their president, M. Tonga Hopoi. Though the ASOSU House of Representatives have voted to impeach Hopoi, she will remain merely suspended from her position until the Senate votes on how she should be sentenced. The Senate will act as a judge and jury, deciding on a verdict that could be anything from dismissing the charges to formally removing her from office. The reason for the impeachment stems from Hopoi's decision to remove ASOSU from the Oregon Student Association due to her belief that the OSA was no longer acting in the best interest of the university. Hopoi had this to say in response to the vote. I want the House and everyone else to know that I respect their devotion to uphold the Constitution. I just wish they would hold their own Speaker of House to the same Constitution, the one who didn't show up for a month. I want to see due diligence goes both ways and if they're looking for the executive branch, they have the executive branch. But I'll be here. It's not a problem. I'll be here until our work is done." End quote. The Senate will set a sentencing date at their next meeting on October 18th, and we will continue to cover the story as it develops further. As the student population increases, investors in Campus Crest communities hope to ease the anxiety of finding housing. The new community will consist of 296 apartments, all housed in a 12-building complex. This sprawling apartment complex will cover 26 to 28 acres of land on the western side of Circle Boulevard. The land is located on 23 acres of wetlands and upland prairie. Despite the efforts of friends of Witham Oaks to buy the land and donate to the city of Corvallis, construction is set to continue as planned. Ted Rollins, CEO of Campus Crest Communities, said, quote, from an ecological perspective, our de design team will work to preserve and protect the most sensitive ecological areas of the site through the careful siting of development that avoids the wetlands and the hillside by preserving the most desirable groves of trees. Vegetation detention areas and rain gardens will protect the wetlands from stormwater runoff and will be, and will be, will be planted with native and, ad and adaptive plants." End quote. He also notes that buildings will be energy efficient and would adhere to the green lifestyle. Witham Oaks will be built in two phases beginning in the summer and is expected to reach the completion in 2014. On Tuesday, November 18th, from noon to 1 p.m., a seminar will be held on how to use effectively social media to get a job. It will be held in Kerr Administration Building, room B8. Those who attend will learn valuable information about LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook, including tips and etiquette to help with networking, job searching, and other career information. For more information, contact Jennifer Busick of Career Services. A new selection of programs at Oregon State University, Cascades, is drawing 10% more students than last year, according to the Daily Barometer. The most popular new program, Energy Engineering Management, which started last fall, increased from 4 to 22 students this year, according to Jane Reynolds, Enrollment Director at Cascades. Other programs such as Exercise Sports Science and Human Development and Family Sciences have also increased in student numbers. A large number of new students are transfers from Cascade, Cascades Partner School, Central Oregon Community College. Over the last five years, the number of, of two-year transfer students has increased by 100 percent. According to, to Cascades Vice President Rebecca Johnson, 20 to 30 percent of students are adult agree completers, which means at one time they have started a degree and are completing it at Cascades. When Cascades began, the majority of students were 30 to 40 year old females. This year, the majority of students are 20 to 24 year olds, which dropped the average age to 28. According to the enrollment office, most new students are also men, shifting the gender gap to 40 percent male and 60 percent female. A public lecture is being held on Monday, October 24th from 7 to 9 p.m. in the LaSalle Stewart Center by Dr. K. Redfield Jameson, a professor of psychiatry at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, as well as an author on depression and bipolar disorder in young adults, according to the university. 
Jameson has written many national bestsellers, including A Unquiet Mind, A Memoir of Moods and Madness, Night Falls Fast, Understanding Suicide, and Touched with Fire, Manic Depressive Illness, and the Artistic Temperament. She is also a co-author on multiple texts and papers discussing mood disorders and creativity, among other topics. Following the lecture, there will be a question and answer session, as well as a book signing. Attendance is free, and some books will be available for purchase. We're heading out into a short break, but when we come back, breaking news in the Connecticut home invasion trial. You won't want to miss it. Radish. Is that for horses? Remember me, Mr. Lobster? From last Tuesday? Banana. 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 Here comes the rain. We need a hat. <laughs> and why do we need a hat? Hmm? To stay dry. That's right. When you talk with your child, you build vocabulary. And learning starts long before school does. For more tips, go to bornlearning.org. Explore new lands, make new friends, and discover new adventures. There are amazing possibilities when you open your mind to reading. Explore new worlds. Read. Just put your hands up, TV land. Yeah. Paradise is lost, I'm paralyzed by the imperative cause She's sharing a coffin with the gods that I've crossed And day by day I'm looking for another outlet I shout, but I've yet to be heard The fear of flying, broken wings of a bird The feelings are nerved, absurd with my word A pseudo-intellectual that's just dying to serve A fallen angel, fate filled with flaws and misfortune Claw marks on the side of the well The feeble attempts of the torture Swords drawn to the necks of the demons Another metaphor, me just trying to protect all my feelings The criminal dealings, led us to the brink that's demonic Born an angel but I'm bringing back a plate that's bubonic A profit like the narcotic product You got up in your pocket with more shock value Than an electrical socket The angel act I dropped it Like the sword of that to Loki So while you're on your deathbed Speak those words that you told me Come on You told me, you told me, you told me If you're in danger of losing your home to foreclosure, call today, because nothing is worse than doing nothing. Have a banana. Eating well and playing go together like best friends. You better believe it. With the food pyramid, the bare necessities of living healthy are easy. Bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. So eat right. Be active. Now move. That's it. And don't forget to have fun. That's the way to be the best. <laughs> at anything you do. You can go to mypyramid.gov to play some games and find out more. Welcome back to the news on KBVR. 
Another life was claimed Tuesday from the helicopter crash in New York's East River last week. According to CNN, Helen Tamaki, 43, had been in critical condition since the incident. The helicopter was carrying five people when it plunged into the water shortly after takeoff. This incident is currently being investigated by a 15-member team from the National Transportation Safety Board. All but one, Sonia Mara of Sydney, Australia, were rescued at the scene. Mara's passing came on her 40th birthday while she was in town to celebrate. The survivors include Mara's stepfather and mother, Paul and Harriet Nicholson, and the pilot, Paul Dudley, all of whom were injured. The three-week trial of Joshua Kalmasarjevsky for the 2007 Connecticut home invasion that left three dead and four scarred for life has ended with his conviction of 17 charges, including three counts of murder, four counts of kidnapping, and charges of burglary, arson, and assault, according to CNN. Prosecutors argued that 31-year-old Karma Sarjewski, along with Stephen Hayes, who was earlier sentenced to death for his role, broke into the home of Dr. William Pettit, his wife Jennifer Hawk Pettit, and their two daughters, 17-year-old Haley Pettit and 11-year-old Michaela Pettit. Upon entering the home, tied up Dr. William Pettit, raped and strangled his wife, and molested one of the daughters before setting, that, setting fire to the home. Both of the daughters died of smoke inhalation, leaving their father the only survivor. Kama Sarjewski sen sentencing is 10 a.m. October 24th, where he could also be facing the death penalty. Following the deadly shooting at a Seal Beach, California salon, the police have placed 42-year-old Scott Evans DeCry in custody, where he is currently facing multiple counts of murder. According to CNN, six people were found dead at the scene of the crime. Three were critically wounded and taken to a nearby hospital, and two later died of their injuries. Police have yet to release a motive for this crime, though there is speculation that it may be connected to the custody battle between DeCry and his ex-wife, Michelle. A stylist at the salon, Michelle DeCry was among those killed. Typically, a quiet and intimate coastal town, Seal Beach Police Sergeant Steve Fowles told reporters that, quote, we have multiple years with zero homicides, so this obviously is an unusual and tragic circumstance. According to CNN affiliate KTLA, this was the deadliest shooting in Los Angeles County history. Raj Rotnan, Raj Rotnan former manager of now-defunct hedge group Galleon Group, was sentenced today to 11 years in federal prison and fined $10 million for insider trading. According to CNN, Raj Rotten was found guilty on May 11th of all 14 counts of conspiracy and fraud after netting six, $64 million on a long-term insider trading scam. He was sentenced at a federal district court in, Manha in Manhattan. Raj Rotten will have to surrender to authorities on November 28th and begin serving his sentence in addition to his $10 million fine. He will have to hand over $53 million as forfeited assets and pay a $1,400 court assessment fee. Raj Rotten managed $7 billion at Galleon before the hedge fund shut down, the fall, shut down following his indictment in 2009. The White Collar Convicts case featured recordings of phone conversations which Raj Rotten and his sources blatantly discussed the ways to profit from non-public information. It has not been decided where Raj Rotten will serve his time. The Federal Bureau of Prisons, not the judge, picks the prison after sentencing. Patricia Modell, a former actress, passed away Wednesday at the age of 80. Also known as Patricia Best Breslin, she appeared on television, film, and the New York stage throughout her acting career. According to CNN, she played Meg Bentley, a nurse, on General Hospital in the late 1960s and Laura Brooks in the TV drama Peyton Place. She also made an appearance on Twilight Zone, Alfred, Hitch Alfred Hitchcock Presents, Perry Mason, and Maverick. At one point during her career, Modell held the record as the woman to appear in the most television shows in U.S. history. She retired from acting after she married her husband, Art Modell, a previous Cleveland Browns and Baltimore Ravens owner. Modell was an active contributor to multiple organizations, including the Make-A-Wish Foundation, the Cerebral Palsy Association, and the Cleveland Clinic Foundation. Federal authorities are accusing a 35-year-old Florida man of hacking into accounts on computers and other devices belonging to more than 50 people. 
According to CNN, entertainers Scarlett Johansson, Christina Aguilera, Mila Kunis, Simone Harucci, and Renee Alstead were a few of the many that were hacked. Christopher Cheney of Jacksonville, Florida was indicted on charges of accessing protective computers without authorization, damaging protected, protected commuter, computers, wiretapping, and ag aggravated identity theft. According to the U.S. Attorney, Andre Barot Jr., Cheney allegedly also took financial information, some movie scripts, and conversations that the celebrities believed to be private. Authorities alleged once Cheney hacked into a celebrity's account, email's account, he would use the contact list to find other celebrities' email accounts, which allowed him to which allowed him access to new victims. Cheney made his initial appearance in U.S. District Court in Jacksonville, Florida, on Wednesday afternoon. He was released on a ten thousand dollar unsecured bond. Cheney has has been indicted on nine counts of computer hacking for gain eight counts of aggravated identity theft, and nine counts of illegal wiretapping, Barot said. If convicted on all 26 counts, Cheney could face a maximum sentence of 120 years in federal prison. A June 10, 1939 letter by Albert Einstein was sold Tuesday evening for nearly $14,000. CNN reports that the letter warned of the persecution of Jews in Germany on the eve of World War II. The letter recognized the importance of, quote, rescuing our persecuted fellow Jews from their calamitous peril and leading them toward a better future, end quote. The letter was handwritten and hand-signed by Einstein. The price estimated by the auctioneer, Nate Sanders, was between $5,000 and $7,000, half of what the item sold for. The buyer has not been revealed at this time. We are going to take a short break. But when we return, we have your international stories for the evening, including a story on an earthquake hitting Bali earlier today. Thanks. You believe this guy? Are you trying to start a wildfire? Sorry. Pass honey. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Sir, are you okay? Everything's fine. Thanks. You wouldn't ignore this, so why ignore the signs of a stroke? Call 911 immediately, because time lost is brain lost. Tú no eres un superhéroe. Visita al doctor regularmente aun cuando te sientes bien. Así podrás seguir cuidando a los que sí te ven como un superhéroe. Para más información, visita ahrq.gov. Chi morning sunshine. Wakey wakey. You up? What you dream about? Me? JK. Text me back. I'll keep texting till you wake up. Are your parents home? Is this something I did? Exclamation point. Huge fight right this now. isn't a joke. Hello? Text me. I present to you Algebra 2. Who will step up to his challenge? Me. Take on the tough classes now. You need them to prepare for college. Three out of four kids are not as secure as they should be because their car seats are not used correctly. But the latch system makes it easier to get it right and to hold your kids tight. Anchor, tether, latch. Learn more at safercar.gov. Welcome back to the Beaver News right here on Channel 26. After investigating a complaint filed against, filed against former International Monetary Fund head Dominique Strauss-Kahn, in which a journalist accused him of attempted rape in 2003, French prosecutors have said that there's a lack of sufficient evidence to file charges. Strauss-Kahn admitted to sexual aggression against Tristine Bannon at the, at the time, but a three-year statute of limitations applies in the case. And Montserrat, Bannon's mother, said that in May 2003, her daughter interviewed Strauss-Kahn in an office in the National Assembly. 
but he contacted her later and asked if he could speak with her again. Upon arriving, Strauss Kahn locked the door into the room they were in, took Bannon's hand, and grabbed her arm. According to, to Mansoret, Bannon told him to let her go, and the incident ended with the two struggling on the floor. Bannon managed to escape the apartment and locked herself in her car outside, calling her mother. Mansoret said she arrived about an hour and a half later to find her daughter still locked in the car and looking, quote, roughed up, with one heel of, the shoes broke, of her shoe broken. Strauss Kahn initially was accused of assaulting a hotel housekeeper in New York, but the charges were dropped after questions were raised about credibility of his accuser. That arrest, in which was, he was pulled off a plane that was Paris bound, led him to his resignation as IMF head. The Indonesian island of Bali was struck with a 6.0 magnitude earthquake early Thursday morning, with dozens reporting injuries. The quake struck 62 miles southwest of Bali with a depth of 38 miles. According to CNN, at least 43 people have been taken to local hospitals, including five who suffered from serious injuries. A local hospital reported that a few have suffered broken bones and are undergoing treatment, while another local hospital stated they are giving treatment for minor injuries but did not specify how many. No tsunami alert was issued. Located on the so-called Ring of Fire, Indonesia is prone to frequent earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. In 2004, a 9.1 magnitude underwater earthquake struck off the coast of Sumatra, leading to a tsunami that killed more than 200,000 people in 14 countries, with Indonesia being one of the hardest hit. The parents of the Israel soldier who held captive by Hamas Hamas, sorry, for more than five years, left the protest tent outside Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office Wednesday, thanking their supporters before heading home. Netanyahu said a deal had, had been made to free him in exchange for more than 1,000 Palestinian prisoners. Shalit, an Israel soldier, was captured in June of 2006 by Palestinian militants. Schlitt is expected to return to Israel within a few days, Netanyahu said Tuesday night, before the cabinet voted in an emergency session 26 to 3 in support of the swap. Netanyahu you also stated on Tuesday night that the government would, quote, return Jalad healthy and whole to his family in all of Israel, end quote. Early Thursday morning, a bus in eastern Nepal plummeted into a river, killing at least 40 people and injuring 13 others, four of whom were categorized as having serious injuries, according to CNN. The accident may be, have been caused by overcrowding due to the Nepali's return to work after the annual Deshane Festival. Road accidents are common in the nation of Nepal due to poor roads, overcrowding, old buses, and inexperienced drivers. The hurricane and then tropical storm Jova has dissipated over western Mexico but its rains and flooding were responsible for that at least six deaths, officials have said. According to CNN, Jovra struck Mexico as a Category 2 hurricane late Tuesday, packing winds of more than 100 miles per hour. It weakened into a tropical storm and then a tropical depression as it moved over western Mexico Wednesday. In Jalisco, the state-run Nautimex news agency reported that civil protection authorities have found a body following the following a mudslide. A total of five people so far have died in Jalisco. Bodies were found as the focus Thursday shifted from the cleanup along Mexico's Pacific coast, while the floodwaters from Jova began to recede. Some residents took to the rooftops in the resort, uh, resort, resort town of Montezillo, one of the hardest hit areas, as, normally small, as a normal small stream turned into a raging river. Water was as much as waist deep in some areas on Wednesday, with police reporting that at least 1,400 people are in shelters. Two Spanish aid workers with Medicine Sans Frontiers, or Doctors Without Borders, were abducted at gunpoint from the Dadaab refugee complex in Kenya earlier today. According to CNN, most aid workers in the area from the United Nations travel with armed Kenyan guards at all times as is required by their regulations, though members of the MSF typically do not. The two women were traveling with a driver who was found shot in the neck 
though in stable condition. The Spanish ambassador to Kenya and other foreign ministry officials were working to secure their release, though a Spanish foreign ministry spokesman in Madrid will give no further details about the abduction at this time other than to say that the families have been notified. Dadaab is about 80 kilometers from the Somali border and is the largest refugee complex in the world. It provides shelter for the thousands who have fled war and famine in the Horn of Africa. That's all the news we have for you tonight, but be sure to tune in Monday at 7 o'clock for more local, national, and international news right here on KBVR.